Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to talk about a new feature in C Sharp which is going to change the way you transfer objects from one layer to another. Yes, today we are going to talk about records which is a new type that has been added in C Sharp 9.0 and we start right now. So guys, this is going to be a very interesting video and we are going to talk about uh, almost all the aspects of records, where to use it, where not to use it and of course how to use it. So again, this is going to be a hands-on lab and we would be going into code, uh, it's not a theory, we'll program and that way we'll learn how to use those. So I request you to watch till the end of this video to get to know about the records. So just before we begin, in case you are coming to the channel for the first time, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any video. So let's start. Alright, so what do we have over here is the bare bone application. So the link is available in GitHub. You can go to a readme page and download the particular tab if you want to. And I'll also have the completed application committed to GitHub as well. So that would also be there. So anyways, uh, it's a very simple application. We will try to understand uh, what is a record based on the code. Alright, so we have the program which is the endpoint. Very simple, nothing special over here. And then we have a computer manager which is sort of a business class that does the operation. And then we have the computer which is a current DTO model. If you see over here, we have an overridden method and the purpose is to put the object to string uh, in case if you want to print it or do like whatever some operation on it anyways so what we are going to do is we are going to replace this computer model with a computer record type and doing this it's pretty simple all right so let's start it and the simplest way to create a record type is simply change this to record let me just do one thing let me create a copy of this class so that in case uh, if you want to have a reference for it uh, you can do that so i have created taken i have taken a copy of the class and just change to record and this works fine i don't need this method because uh, record types have a default implementation uh, where they can serialize the object so this is something i don't need that's pretty much it so when we are using the record in this way by just having changing the class to record we are creating a mutable record type and that takes away uh, certain benefits because uh, records are considered to be an immutable sort of record and the way of handling that is changing the setters to init. All right. So when we change the setter to init, what exactly does it does? And before uh, actually going to that, let me just put it over here, uh, the third way of like, uh, so first is like just changing the class to record. Second way is uh, having the same structure, but uh, instead of having setters, we have init over here. And the third way, which is uh, quite simple, is basically a single line statement that we can do and this is something like this and what we do is like all the parameter that we uh, need to pass in all the properties that we just pass in as a part of parameter so this can be correlated to a simple constructor call let's just complete it all right so uh, let me just comment it for a while and i'll have this as well so this is the most simplest way if you just want to have some objects being transferred across layers you can just write a single line and it will work as good but there is a problem and the problem is of course as you see all these parameters have to be passed on as a part of constructor initialization and with that this code will break if you see just let me ML feature all right this should work fine so uh, the problem is uh, if I if I pass something like this then I need to pass in uh, the object as uh, 
all right so this works fine but the others won't and that is the advantage of having the uh, init keyword over here so with that uh, let's say if we keep it like something like this so this will work out and we will have a sort of a property initialization over here so we are changing the way how we are going to construct the objects of my record instance if i use it in the first way uh, i pass in all the parameters as a part of a constructor of course i need to pass in those values as a constructor call whenever i am creating my object and the other way is like I, when i have this init keyword in place of setter i can do all the property initializations like this now the interesting thing uh, let's say if i want to have a uh, create an object like this was UMP. just let us create a rudimentary object new a computer and then we have manufacturer equal to Dell model equal to and price equal to whatever now since we are using the init keyword, I cannot change any of these properties post declaration. And what this means is like, uh, I am not able to do something like this. This is not allowed. And if you see over here, what is the init only property or index search can only be, cannot be reassigned. Basically, we cannot change these properties and with init keyword over here, uh, it's just set. We can only define those at the time of uh, object initialization. So in a sort, uh, it worked as a sort of a read only uh, type of approach. Uh, let's, let's just add this object as well as a part of our return. And let me just copy paste this as well. So what we have over here is we have four uh, objects of from record that are being passed back. Now let's uh, call the method and fetch these objects to see them in action. All right, let's use a new C# -sharp feature in case you are not already aware. Uh, we don't need to define the complete uh, object name over here. We can just say new and this will work out perfectly fine. And uh, computers equal to computer manager dot net computers. And uh, let's just try to see first uh, what do we get over here. And we use the default uh, console dot read line. So that we don't step out of the application and we write the computer computers let's just see the first record and now when we run the application uh, since records have a default uh, two string property we have to realize it in a better way i should be able to see uh, the computer record in a well formatted way yes and here you see it's there we don't need to do anything define any two string and all the properties of the object are there so that is one uh, important aspect what that can be debugging now uh, the major reason because we are using those in a data intensive operations uh, these computer is because of the equality that they provide so uh, if I let me just uh, if all right, so let's take an example of this class. Uh, just let me create another instance of it. And let me call it So this is just for demo and All right, so what we have done over here is like we have created another object type. Uh, it's a plain object again uh, called uh, computer OBJ and uh, that has more or less similar functionality what we were having earlier. And what we have done is like we have initiated these two objects with the same set of properties. Everything is same, but the instances and the references are different ones. So when we try to run this, what do you expect we should see? Uh, is that equal or is that not? 
Well, let's just see that by yourself. It should be a false. And the reason being, uh, when we are doing it this way, uh, the default way of equality chats is arrange the references. And since these are both separate uh, references, separate instances, they are never going to be equal. Solve this problem, one way is like we implement the i-equality interfaces and there we define how to equate two different instances. Uh, but the beauty of records is that we don't need to actually do anything. So just let me change this to here. And uh, what we have uh, just let, so uh, record number one and three. So they are the same ones. Just let me do it, computer one. All right, so uh, what we are doing, we are trying to see, we are trying to do the same thing. Uh, here we have defined uh, these two instances and we are we again have these two, but as a record type over here and uh, where we are defining uh, the first and the third. So just try to see and this should print as true. Let's just see. Yes, and if you see over here, we have the true statement. So this is again uh, one of the very big advantages uh, because most of the time uh, we are working we have to create these objects just for the sake of transferring uh, data from one layer to another and it solves a lot of time uh, while doing that. We don't need to uh, create or define each of these properties wherever there are uh, comparisons needs to be done, uh, we can uh, directly equate those and uh, it's provided out of the box uh, along with this like printing capabilities that can be put in logs or debug or something like that. So those are there. So covering one last point over here regarding the inheritance. Now inheritance is one uh, major aspect. Uh, let's say if you want to inherit those, uh, it's again actually very easy and inheritance works in the same way as it with uh, any other object type. But we have a constraint over here. And the constraint is like if you are trying to inherit a record, it should be inherited from or to a record type only. Uh, just like class, you cannot have a myths of a class and a record. So if I want to have something like this, all right, uh, so I can have something like this. This will work out. But if I try to do something like this, deriving from a uh, class type, that will not work out. So that is one limitation uh, over there. Now, one major challenge that sometimes we might see is like uh, when we want to create a copy with a different values. So let's say there's already a computer with some defined configurations, uh, RAM and other things. Uh, manufacturer and base properties uh, and the variance over here is that uh, the model number and the price are different. So uh, we probably want to extend this or use this as a baseline object and uh, have cre and create other objects as well. So how can we do that? Uh, in fact, that is actually uh, quite easy with a single line. We can do that and uh, just uh, let me show it how it is done. Well, uh, and we can do something like this prompt. That's our initial object and keyword with. And in that, now in the braces, we need to define what properties we want to change. So this is again a sort of an initializer. It will create a new object, a reference type immutable object it will create. But again, it will copy all the default properties from the base object and put the new properties in the uh, and proper and put the updated values what we provide as a new set of properties. So let's say we just want to change the model name to something like uh, 8800 uh, and uh, let's update the price as well over here. Price equal to uh, $2,000 something like that. Now uh, let's pass this object as well over here. And this is zero, one, two, three. So third record, let's try to print it and see uh, what actually it's print. Or in fact, what we can do, we can print uh, both of these objects. All right, so this should print all the computers and just let's see the records that we have changed over here. So if you see, uh, this should be the last two records, new computer and computer, and probably over here, the these are the records. 
and we have the new price as two thousand dollars that we have put over here. So we have the price as two thousand dollars for the new object. Earlier one is four eight four seven eight, and the model number as well. The Dell property which we defined so that remains as there. So I guess that covers all the basics that you need to start implementing the retort and it can actually save a lot of time and effort uh, while building with records. So guys do let us know if you have already started using retorts in your applications or you do plan to use in case of course you face any problems or you have any queries uh, you can of course uh, let us know via comment section and definitely we'll try to help you out for any other queries comments suggestions please 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 use the comments box below and do let us know and smash that thumbs up button if you do like the video if it helps you out in any way subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so you remain updated don't miss out we have a few more videos coming in on smart programming where we would be discussing uh, how these small tweets can help you out in your day-to-day -day programming and improve your efficiency and productivity thanks for watching have a good day see you and again the link is in description